Hello friend. Today we are tackling this kitchen. We had spent a tremendous amount of time in the kitchen the day before and instead of deep cleaning it and getting all the dishes and the kitchen clean, I thought, you know what, I'd rather spend time with my family and we're going to tackle it the following day. So that's what we're going to do today. We are going to do some deep cleaning the two ovens. We are going to deep clean a couple drawers and we are going to do a little bit of food preservation projects first so that the mess that this is going to create is not going to make a mess after I spend time deep cleaning the kitchen. So sometimes when I do big projects, I'm able to get the kitchen clean and go to bed with a clean kitchen. And sometimes I prioritize the evening <laughs> with spending time with my family. And it just really depends on how the day goes. And I do not fault myself for not getting the kitchen clean and going to bed with a messy kitchen. That is the beauty, I think, of having a working kitchen, a kitchen where a lot of homemade meals are, is it's just the natural cycle and rhythm of a working kitchen. So what I wanna do though first, before we tackle the deep clean projects, which I'm excited that we are going into winter and we can start tackling some major organizational projects is I'm gonna tackle these onions. So we grew quite a few onions together this year. And these are the onions that have started to flower. You can see that green growing in the middle and the flower head I just showed you. That means that this onion bulb is not gonna last very long. Onions are kind of a funny plant. They are what are called biannuals, which means that you plant the seed in the ground. The goal of the onion, the first growing season, is to grow, produce an onion bulb, that that's usually what we wanna harvest and eat. But the onion's goal for growing an onion bulb is to give it energy for overwinter so that plant will go dormant over winter if you left it in the ground and then the next year it has the energy it needs to go ahead and produce a flower which will produce seed which will then continue its genes to the next generation so every other year an onions a typical onion is going to produce seed well most of my onions did not bolt and go to flower the first year, but there are a handful here, and I'm not sure why sometimes they do and sometimes they don't, even though they're not supposed to. But once they go to flower, then that onion knows, you know what, I've done my job. I don't need to stay fresh for any length of time. So it'll go bad quickly. The reason why onions can be harvested and sit in our pantries for so long is because that's what onions are designed to do outside. They're designed to stay fresh all winter long outside so that the next year they can produce seed and pass on their genes to the next generation. Well, I had a handful of onions here that thought, you know what? I'm gonna produce seed the first year. And so they their bulb will not last long in storage. And so what I'm gonna do with these onions is chop them up and get them in the freeze dryer to turn into onion powder because the only onion powder I have in my house right now is purple onion powder. And it tastes delicious, but sometimes I don't want purple onion powder. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and get this chopped up and freeze dried and save these onions from going bad on us. So back to the kitchen and kind of what my goals are. Oh, here, I wanted to kind of create a cozy environment while I was gonna spend quite a bit of time in the kitchen. So I decided to go ahead and light a candle and I couldn't find my lighter. So a candle was gonna work just fine in order to light some of these beeswax candles that smell incredible. And we're gonna kind of create a cozy environment. I put on some Christmas music and we are gonna just make this house feel cozy while we give it a nice deep clean and some tender love and care that it needs. So over the summer and growing season, my focus is gardening, spending time outside, producing as much produce as possible and then preserving it. And I need to tackle those projects when the crop is coming in so that it doesn't go bad. We're also gonna get the diffuser going with some cinnamon and orange essential oils just so the house can smell fresh while we give it some love. But once winter comes, I can kind of switch my focus to inside and we can start kind of doing some inside projects and I'm really looking forward to getting some really big projects inside done this winter. Friend, thank you for being in the kitchen with me on this day when we just need to get this kitchen put back together. 
So I figured this is gonna need to soak. I have never cleaned these ovens before and they desperately, desperately need it. So I'm gonna get these racks out here. There, because I need the counters to clean. I mean, look at this. This might look really bad to some and this might be not too bad to others. What I'm thinking is getting a little water in here and the barkeeper's friend give it a good scrub and I'm gonna let it sit while I work on other things. One of my big goals is to get talking about this winter. I'm gonna go kind of through what some of my big organizational like indoor goals are, is to get every single cabinet in this kitchen deep cleaned. The first thing we're starting with are these two ovens. I have lived in this house for a year and a half and I've never cleaned the inside of these ovens. I don't really know why, I just never got around to it. <laughs> and so today's the day. So my goal is, this winter to get to every single drawer and cabinet and wipe out the inside and also do some purging of kitchen utensils and gizmos and gadgets. I did that last year and I think I want to make that an annual kind of winter project is to go through the kitchen, purge what needs to be purged, organize what needs to be organized and do a deep clean. And so today the big kitchen areas we're going to tackle are the two ovens, getting all the dishes done, sweeping and mopping, getting all the surfaces clean. We get all the cabinets, like the fronts of the cabinets wiped down. I mean, obviously that has to happen every you know, few weeks with the amount of cooking I do in my kitchen, but I want to get in the cupboards cleaned. And we also get to the baking drawers and cabinets as well on this day. So these bowls, the dishes are obviously gonna go in the sink, the onion tops are gonna go in the compost, and I'm gonna get also these eucalyptus plants in the compost too. So I'm gonna go bring those to the compost and then we can come back and tackle these dishes. We've already tackled together organizing the pantry. That was a huge, huge undertaking. That took me a total probably, I think you and I spent two days down there but I think total of my time, I probably was down there for, you know, four days with just a couple hours in between, you know, when we were down there together getting that organized. So that feels really, really good. Josh is tackling the garage currently right now. He's been spending a ton of time. I actually spent some time. We took a Saturday and worked in the garage together. And then I got out what I could get out and he has been working and getting that really organized. We've never really had a chance since we moved in to really organize the garage and get an organizational system in the garage. And so that's something that he's been tackling, which I greatly appreciate. And my goal is to get into the grow room at some point and get that organized so that going into the growing season, we can have a, you know, a good, we can feel good going into the growing season. I also have a room that I don't think you and I have been in before, but it's where I keep the majority of my food preservation equipment. And I think I want to go in there and get that organized as well. So just some things, I wanna get my closet organized. We need to get a better system in our laundry room. You've been in there. Our laundry room currently is half laundry room, half Josh's home office, and it's not the most functional. <laughs> When we first moved into this house, we have a bonus area where we've got a big project we started there. You were with me when we tore out the carpet and we sealed the floors. We have not been up there and worked and done any projects, Josh and I, since we moved in because obviously this last summer was working on the garden. And now that we've got that tackled this winter, we really need to get the upstairs finished but one thing at a time, one thing Josh and I are working on is trying to, if we start a project, let's finish the project and then we can move on to the next project. So I need some towels. 
because now we're going to tackle washing these dishes by hand so we've got the dishwasher going which is fantastic i love when i can get my appliances working for me so we've got the freeze dryer going we have the dishwasher going i'm sure i started a load of laundry and now i can tackle these dishes but one thing you know josh and i have been working on is trying to if we start a project we finish it and so josh really wanted to get the garage tackled before we start working upstairs and i totally agreed with him that the garage is an area that we are in on a very very regular basis and it's kind of i haven't really shown you the garage because it was really just a catch-all and i really appreciate the fact that he's been taking you know his weekends and things to get that functional for our little family so that's really nice so here we're just washing dishes by hand i've got i don't know what i'm listening to now at this point i had music going and then i must have put in an audiobook or a podcast or something and we're just you know enjoying getting this house put back together today was not intended when i started to be this big of a project i was just going to get the dishwasher going and kind of go about the day because I kind of have two different types of work days that are like big kitchen projects or garden projects. And then I have what are called computer days where I really just sit on my computer and work on my computer all day. And this technically on this day was supposed to be a computer work day. But I just got into starting this project. I was not planning on doing this on this day. I was not planning on deep cleaning any of the kitchen drawers or the oven or anything like that. But, you know, sometimes once you like your eyes are open to something and you see it, it's like, oh gosh, we've got to take care of that. So that's kind of what happened. It just kind of escalated. So a lot of times what I do when I've got a bunch of big dishes like that is I'll get my dishwasher going and then I'll go sit on my computer and get my computer work done. When my dishwasher is done, I'll unload it and put in a bunch of the bigger dishes, like the bowls and pots and pans, and I won't wash them by hand because I don't have the time. But today it was like, I want to get this kitchen clean. We are celebrating a birthday on this evening, so I know I don't have to cook tonight for dinner. And so I know I'm not gonna be making any more dishes. And so once I got into this project, it was just like, there was nothing stopping me from pulling out the razor blade and scraping this oven door. And I have to say, when I do do these projects like this, where I get in and I deep clean my kitchen, my drawers, and now my oven, I enjoy spending time in the kitchen that much more. When my kitchen is clean, I like and organized. Organized is a big one. I really enjoy being in my kitchen that much more. And you all know how much I love being in my kitchen, even when it's messy. When you start getting into these deep cleaning projects, you just see what you have never seen before. There is a vent up here I never noticed, and it is so gross. Oh my goodness, friend. Ah! We are going to take care of that today. So that's just the initial clean. I'll get back into it more with some cleaner. It's kind of embarrassing when you get right into it, how bad it is. I am no cleaning expert. I could probably benefit from watching some clean videos, but this is what I did for these two ovens and it worked really well, is I soaked everything in water first and then I put the barkeeper's friend on there and then I gave everything a little bit of a scrub and then I left it while I tackled the dishes. And then I came back with a razor blade and a pretty scrubby, 
it's a it's a natural fiber sponge and I used the razor blade and the natural fiber sponge and then I came in with a big bowl of water after I razor bladed and scrubbed everything and the water really helped so that I could wipe away all of the cleaner and I could get all the surfaces wiped it out so I could see if there was anything I missed so I could go back in with the razor blade and the scrubber and scrub it but I do want to make sure I get as much of the cleaner out of my oven as possible so that that's not like in my oven cooking along with my food but I am so happy with how so far this oven is looking compared to what it did just about a couple hours ago this oven is looking so much better it's not perfect but it is, I would say, 90% better. I could spend probably another, I don't know, 40 minutes on it if I was gonna get every little scrape of everything, but this is fantastic. Way better, I had no idea. I knew it was bad, but I didn't know it was that bad. I'm mostly talking about this up here because that is disgusting but you don't know what you don't know. And now I know that I need to look out for that. I'm just drying it now. I am gonna go back in with just spray cleaner and spray it down with just some regular cleaner type things with a new rag. We're gonna start with a new rag. This is why I did not want to fold these rags because I knew I was gonna be using them. Every time I do a project like this, I wonder what are the other things in my house that are not clean <laughs> that I don't know that I should be cleaning until I get in to do a deep clean like this. Let me know if you guys have any things I should be deep cleaning. I also need to wipe down the sides here because I've been holding on to them for leverage and I made them dirty. I can go ahead and get the trays back in here. I think what I'm going to do for no other reason other than I just cleaned it with chemicals is I think I'm going to go ahead and run my oven for like 15, 20 minutes with nothing in it just to burn off any of the stuff that I just put in there that I have no science behind that. That's just what I feel like makes me comfortable. Look at this, gross. This is after I washed and rinsed, washed and rinsed a bunch of times. Let's go ahead and clean out the microwave because that's only gonna take a second. Sometimes it helps just to get a little win under your belt, like a little project like the microwave before we're gonna tackle the second oven because that one's pretty bad too. this corner over here got dirty but there's something maybe spilled around here so I'm gonna see if I can get that clean but that looks a lot better I'm just gonna start working my way around the kitchen now I wasn't planning on getting this counter but I might as well get this counter and the front of these cabinets while I'm standing here so that as I walk around the kitchen I can just check different things off. Oh, shoot, <laughs> there's water in the diffuser. I wasn't really thinking about that. Okay, hopefully I didn't break it. Get the knobs, high touch points. I don't think I've ever cleaned under here either. Ugh. We now have one section of the kitchen done. So that feels good. 
So I could move on to these cupboards, but I think I don't want to do that because I'm not done washing dishes. I'm letting those soak so that I can wash them a little easier. So let's move on to this oven. So I'm going to rehydrate what I already put on here because it's kind of dried a little bit. I'm gonna start off with water in a bucket because I didn't do that last time. And I think I'm gonna start off with a razor too because I've got a bunch of burnt on stuff on here too. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, I think starting with the razor is the way to go because then you can break everything up before you even scrub anything. Oh yeah, that's great. I think I want to get some of this gunk off here so we can see what we're working with. It's already looking better. Is it going to make it easier to see through when I am done cleaning? How often do you all clean your oven? This is the first time I've cleaned the inside side of my oven since I've lived here. I don't know if I should be embarrassed by that, if that's a really long time or if that's not a long time, but it might start becoming more of a regular thing around here. I'm kind of going back and forth between my scrubber and my cloth. Those are, I think they're called just cloth paper towels. I absolutely love them. They're 100% cotton. And if I can find them on Amazon, I can link them, but I'm sure you've seen them before. I'm going between the scrubber and that. And then I'm also getting fresh water every once in a while so that I can wipe and kind of see what I've done and what I haven't done. And if I've missed something, then I can go back. The bucket of water really was super helpful. And I started that earlier with this oven versus the first oven. So I just noticed the corner of this stove right here. I, it's gross. I never, I don't think I've ever cleaned that before either. It's so funny when you start getting down in the kitchen up close and personal, you start seeing things you just never noticed before. And that's one reason why it doesn't hurt to do one of these days every once in a while, where you literally crawl <laughs> into your oven to get it clean. Going in there with a clean rag and new spray, and I'm just gonna wipe everything down so that it's nice and clean. Yes, there's a carrot on my ground, on my floor <laughs> from yesterday. I just found this right here is where I was talking about on the corner. I mean, I'm sure it's been cleaned before, but I've never been this up close and personal with it, looking at it. Here is the after of this oven on the inside. I'm going to wait to finish cleaning the outside of it until I get the top and this counter clean because I can just see it falling onto the oven face. And so I don't want to clean this area until I get this all clean. I'm done with this grimy bucket of water. So I'm going to dump this out 
All of these dishes in the sink, I'm going to rewash. Well, they weren't actually washed to begin with. I was just soaking them in soap and water. But because I poured out this grimy water on top, I'm going to pretend like I haven't touched them at all. And we're going to get them really clean. Take these off because these are gross. So here is the next big project. Let's go ahead and get the rest of these dishes hand washed and we can just tackle something and feel like we've got something accomplished. So the ovens are both done, which feels huge. What a big win. <laughs> Tell me how often do you clean the inside of your oven? Now at my first home, we use the self-cleaning mode one time and it blew the it blew some fuse inside it and it broke the oven and josh and i were first married and we had just bought the home and we went about four or five months with no oven because we could not afford to have it fixed so it it was definitely interesting relying on this was before i don't even think i had instapot yet i had a crock pot but I mostly just used the stove. And so that was an interesting four or five months where all the cooking I did was on the stovetop. And then it luckily it didn't break the oven. It was just a fuse that needed to be replaced. And it wasn't a huge, huge expense, but we weren't sure what an expense it was gonna be. So we kind of put off getting the handyman out. And then once we were able to, we were very grateful that we had a working oven again. So ever since then, I do not like to use the self cleaning mode on the ovens. So I guess that's probably why I put off scrubbing the oven because I knew it was going to be a big project but I think that's something I should probably do like every four months seems like a realistic time frame but let me know I'm not like the neatest cook if you've been around here at all and seen me do cooking I spill I things overflow and all the things and so you know my oven probably could do for a little bit more cleaning inside the oven more often now on this day I did not get ready for the day. This is me getting up and just getting started. I have a dinner I'm going to this night for a birthday, and I knew that I needed to get ready to go to the birthday dinner. We're going out to eat, and so I figured it probably wasn't worth my time to shower and get ready for the day and then do this project and then need to shower and get ready for the dinner, and so I just hit the ground running when I got up and started this project. So we got all the dishes done, awesome. Now I'm going to go ahead and scrub my sink. You all recommended this barkeeper's friend to me when we lived in the last house, we had an enamel sink and it was so stained. And I had made some mention about my enamel sink was super, super stained. And so many of you guys recommended barkeeper's friend and I've been using it ever since I love it and so that's what I'm using to clean my stainless steel sink now I now that I say that I don't know if you're supposed to use it to clean a stainless steel sink but that's what I've been using and it seems to be working pretty good I love cleaning my sink it always feels like a huge accomplishment because that means that all the dishes are done once I get to clean my sink so I'm going to clean my sink and I'm kind of trying to work my way around my kitchen in a strategic manner. And I'm trying to work from top to bottom so that I'm not messing up an area I've already cleaned. Now, I don't always do this, but because it's a deep clean and I am kind of giving my kitchen a little bit more love than it usually gets on a daily basis, I have some stainless steel polish and I'm just putting that in the sink and then I've got a clean dry rag and I'm just wiping that polish to kind of get the sink nice and shiny. So here we did it. We have all of these dishes done. I'm going to grab another towel out of this basket. So I just grabbed this basket out of the laundry room. All my towels were in the basket clean and I brought that clean basket into the kitchen and I did not take the time to fold it because I knew I'm going to be going through a tremendous amount of towels. I try not to use paper towels. We use paper towels in this house, but it's usually for like dirty messes. You know, we've got dogs and things. And so if there's a mess that we want to be able to just toss the towel, then that's what we try to use our paper towels for. So I've got these cloth. Now, this is a different brand of just a cloth 
all 100% cotton paper towel and this is what I like to use. I don't, I personally don't love the microfiber towels. I find that they don't absorb very well. And so I just love 100% cotton, whether it's a dish towel or um, like a paper towel, that's my go-to. So I started cleaning the fronts of the cabinets too. So once I got the dishes done and the counter clean and the sink clean there, I went ahead and moved down and got all of the fronts and the inside. That was the key there, getting the inside of my cupboard doors cleaned as well. That was another kind of eye opener as I was in this project and cleaning the fronts of them. I was like, oh goodness, the insides are just as dirty. <laughs> and so I took a minute to scrub the outside and the inside of each of the doors up to this oven. Now that I'm kind of around the corner in this kitchen, I have not cleaned the countertops or anything. I haven't cleaned my stove top yet. So that's what I'm gonna tackle here now. Now this stove does not look very bad. You have seen, well, I've done some videos where we clean the stove and it is a disaster where things have boiled over and cooked onto the stove top. This was really not that bad. What happens when I get really caked on, burnt on, crusty stuff on the stove is usually what I will do is I will take a wet cloth, just one of those wet or cotton paper towel things, get it damp, set it on the baked on bits and let it sit and then it's really easy to clean. But thankfully on this day, I did not have to do that. And now that I got the stove top clean, I'm just gonna work my way down. I think another reason why I was so motivated to get this done on this day is one, it really, really needed it. And two, I knew that I wasn't gonna have to cook dinner. <laughs> And so I knew that if I got this project done, then it was gonna be able to stay clean for a while. Because a lot of times, you know, we clean our kitchen, especially if we cook a lot at home, then it just gets messy again. And so I was really grateful that on this day, I was gonna be able to get it clean and then not have to get it messy for a while. I do get the question often too, do I ever take breaks or do I ever not cook? And absolutely I take breaks and absolutely I don't cook a lot of times. We don't eat out very often, maybe once, maybe twice a month. And so, you know, a lot of food is made in this kitchen is, and then a lot of food preservations are done in this kitchen in the summer. But there are times because I do do batch cooking and I do freezer meals where, especially on a time where I have just deep cleaned the kitchen, I might have, we might rely on freezer meals for the next three or four days and leftovers and things because I wanna keep the kitchen clean. Sometimes that's a benefit also for having freezer meals is not only does it, you know, stop me from going out to eat or getting takeout, you know, on nights that I don't wanna cook, but sometimes I just wanna keep my kitchen really clean <laughs> and I don't wanna do big cooking projects because I just wanna enjoy a clean kitchen. Well, that's where I really like doing batch cooking and freezer meals and relying on kind of my previous self's efforts to enjoy that. So now we've got the perimeter of the kitchen clean and done. I've wiped down the island cabinets. I wanna tackle these two drawers. These are my two baking drawers. I am so grateful the previous owner put these two drawers in this island, I think it was absolutely brilliant because I can keep my sugar, flour, oats, brown sugar, powdered sugar, my baking soda, baking powder, vanilla, peppermint, all those baking essentials in these two drawers. And it is so convenient. I'm so grateful. This is probably my favorite thing about this new kitchen. But because these containers stay in these drawers, the, they do get messy and they do need a good scrub and vacuum every once in a while. I've been trying to do this about every two to three months. And here you can see that sugar and it's not wanting to vacuum up very well. So I wanted to get in here before, especially before baking season is in like full, full swing. 
I wanted to get in here and just kind of tidy this up. I do end up giving up on that vacuum because for some reason it was kind of stuck on there and I just grabbed this little tool and I used it to scrape everything up and then I was able to vacuum and then we go in and we spray and wipe and clean down each of these two. I'm only tackling two drawers. I actually have four drawers. This drawer right here is where I keep my flour and white sugar, baking powder, baking soda, yeast, and vanilla. And then the drawer, the next drawer we're gonna clean out is where I keep my whole wheat flour, my oats, my cocoa powder, cinnamon, and chocolate chips. And so these are the two drawers we're gonna tackle. There are two more drawers underneath these two drawers that are actually way worse and disorganized because they have all the miscellaneous baking things like cupcake liners and all the spices like ginger and allspice and cardamom and cinnamon and my powdered sugar and just a bunch of random things. And so I didn't have the bandwidth to tackle those on this day. I knew that dinner was coming up soon and so I need to, you know, make sure that whatever I focus my time on, I'm going to be able to finish and I want to be able to get the floors clean as well. So that is that drawer. We've got one drawer done. This is the second drawer we're going to tackle. Do you guys have anything you want to tackle this winter? Any projects? Anything you want to get prepared for for the growing season for next year? I would love to hear kind of what your winter goals are or plans, or maybe your plan is to just slow down and enjoy the winter season and the coziness that that brings. I would love to hear what your winter goals are. Now that we've got the drawers here, you can see really well there's four drawers. So the top two drawers are done and another day we will need to tackle the bottom two drawers. But for now, I knew that that's what I could start and finish along with still having time to tackle the final things that I knew I wanted to tackle so that when I was done on this day, it felt like the entire kitchen was clean. I don't get into those bottom two drawers that often and so <laughs> out of sight, out of mind, right? Today I was trying to focus on the, the items that would make a difference in the way that I feel about my kitchen and my home. Now that we've got the counters done, the ovens done, the stove done, the dishes done, we can actually move to the floor. The floor for me is always the very last thing I'm going to tackle because throughout the cleaning day, stuff is falling on the floor and I wouldn't wanna clean the floor and then make more of a mess. You can see these floors need attention. So the first thing I'm gonna do is a vacuum and I'm gonna give them a really good vacuum. Get as much of the big grime up before we get to mopping. Sometimes when I do big days like this it or like when I'm organizing and cleaning, it can kind of feel like whack-a-mole. Like I can get the kitchen deep cleaned but then maybe my laundry room's a disaster or I can deep clean my bathroom drawers but then you know, there's a bunch of weeding that needs to be done. You know, it's just, I think that's natural and a normal part of living is that for me at least, I have a hard time having every aspect of my life deep cleaned and organized at one time. And, you know, I think that's okay. I think it's okay that, you know, we're just doing our best and prioritizing what is the next most important thing to tackle. So over the spring and summer, the most important thing was the garden. And then now that the days are getting shorter and it's cold outside and the garden is put to bed, I can kind of switch my focus from outdoor projects into the home and love on my home, love on my family, and just enjoy this time of year. Enjoy kind of the slower paced time inside so that come spring and winter, I am so ready to be outside. I actually am already planning next year's garden. I've never been a big garden planner, 
but I have surprised myself that I'm sketching out the garden beds and I'm excited for 2024's garden. I probably should have done this before I swept and mopped, but I'm getting to it now. I'm gonna wipe the front of the refrigerator off. And this is the last big thing I need to do in the kitchen. And we kind of did a good deep clean on the kitchen. I mean, I didn't clean inside the refrigerator, but it's not too bad. So this has been great, a great way to spend the day. I've got about an hour until I need to head to dinner. And so that's gonna be perfect. I'll be able to shower and get ready. I did not, not wanna shower until I was done with this because I knew I was gonna get super warm and sweaty and gross. That's one thing about when you're cleaning, at least for me, is it's a lot of work. And it's been great though. It feels so much better in here. This has definitely been overdue getting those ovens cleaned. Who knew? Well, I guess I did, I'd looked in there, but it was, it was time. The floors are dry so I can put these mats back down and then I'm going to fold the last of the towels that I didn't use, which was only two towels. So I'm really glad I didn't fold those earlier and waste my time. I've already started another load of towels because I know that I'm gonna need them for the next cooking project. So I basically got this kitchen clean just in time to messy it up again. These are the only, only two towels clean that I have in my kitchen now, but the other ones are being washed. So I'll be able to take them out in just a minute. Well, not in just a minute. It will be a little bit before I can rotate them, but now I need to go get ready for dinner. I've got a cake in the refrigerator that I baked yesterday for my mom. So we're gonna go have a nice dinner. I don't have to worry about cooking or messing up the kitchen. We can at least have it clean for one night until we do our next big cooking project. Here is what the after looks like. I'm so happy with how things turned out. Thank you for being here. If you enjoyed this, I can pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.